multiple, multi, multi-generational baptism last week. So I hope that you didn't, because it wasn't regular journey, I hope you didn't skip it. And actually, I saw a flood of teenagers go eat all the pizza, but also <laughs> rush Isaac and Jack at the end of their baptism and, and, and come around them. And man, it, it just felt like family. And it was one of those memorable moments that I hope. And not only was that, that was kind of like the icing on the cake. But right here from this very platform that I'm standing on right now, we heard the ending of the completion reading of God's word as Mr. John A. And one of our wisest men in the church, <laughs> uh, as one of our elders of age in the church, but he's he finished reading and closing out the scripture. May the grace be for all God's people. In Jesus' name, amen. As you end Revelation with that, that verse there, and it was just a celebratory moment. And then we went right into to worship. And man, what an incredible, uh, I hate to use the word feeling, but if you were in here, you would know what I'm talking about. And so, I wanted to just applaud and continue to celebrate that. But you have your Bibles. We're going to go. It is week six, even though technically this is like week eight. (laughs) Uh, But it is week six of the book of Ephesians. So it means we're in chapter six. Six. Yes, chapter six. So we're going to go there. And actually, Pastor Lance is going to do something a little bit different. I'm inspired by the Bible reading Uh, that we did from creation to revelation. And so actually we're going to read a lot of the scriptures and then we're going to go back and unpack it in just a moment. But I also wanted to remind you with the whole discompopulation, waiting for students to get here and some leaders are still on their way because of the accident. I forgot to give you any announcement. So obviously some people remembered the memo. I know it was a couple weeks later. It was Wacky Wednesday. That's why, even though I don't really feel like I'm dressed as wacky as I could have been. I feel like I did a too good of a job shopping at the Salvation Army. Yeah, you look good. Yeah, I feel like this. I was like, I might wear this. You would wear that out. I would. I would wear this out. I would wear most of my clothes that I may. So right now, hold up. How much money you think this cost me today? So, so the, the, just the shirt and and the shorts. The shirt and the shorts. So some of you are saying six. She said two fifty. Four dollars. Four dollars. I got out of the store. For four dollars, because also, so, I, I'm talking about my outfit, my outfit. So, so I got out the door with my outfit for four dollars. So really, it was like six fifty. With you'll, if you see Maddie later, you'll see her audacious leggings that I found. Uh, but so it is Wacky Wednesday. So next week is Pink Out Night. So we're gonna see who can. You can ask your mom. Go ahead and order your Pepto Bismol suit. Uh, if you need to go ahead and get that on Amazon Prime uh, for you, uh, uh, <laughs> if you want to find that from head to toe. So we're going to see who can, who can rep the most pink next week for Pink Out Night. And then don't forget, in two weeks is the costume party. I was asked by my daughters that should we make it a cowboy theme night? So... Uh, so somebody in the back, they're yelling yes. So, oh, cowboys and aliens. Yeah. Cowboys and aliens. I think is what uh, we said. Cowboys versus aliens. So anyway, so there, there's there's that, or, or just come with a squid on your head next week, uh, or two weeks. So either way, dress up. Just nothing scary, bloody, gory, or evil. Okay, <laughs> just cover all the bases. Plus, also next week, who remembers this from last year? Uh, myself, Mr. Allen, and you guys all know Jeremiah and Taylor's dad, Mr. Dave. Mr. Dave definitely remembers this. <laughs> and so we're bringing back the One Chip Challenge. Myself will also be leading the way in this. Miss Carrie Ziegler has also, woo, high school girls leader, has also volunteered to partake. But I took a poll today to see... Uh, 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 so we're, we're, yeah, so, so we, we need, we need a dad. We're looking for a dad. Yeah, so that would be a two for one if we got Mr. Andy Mayer. 
uh, to do it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of milk. So, very, very well said. Chris is the dad. All right, shh. So let's dive in. Let's dive in. Ephesians chapter six. And I feel like Hunger Games is the right war. A time for war. A terrible time. I don't even remember the. Yeah, war, terrible war. But that's what that, that's the kind of the topic tonight is war. And when you think about war, we think about battle. When we think about battle, I'm hoping that you think about armor. So the, the, the theme that we would call this tonight is war, but then like the, the subtopic that we're going to really talk about tonight, we're really going to land on and, and pull out of Scripture is the armor of God. Armor of God. And so, but I want to first, before we get into the scripture, I want to think about you're packing for a trip. And it, it, it doesn't matter the duration of the trip. There's always the basic needs, whether it's for one night or a week of camp, for example, or a retreat or a mission trip. There's always the basic necessities, the basic needs that we need for the trip. Mom and dad, if they said, if you went and they're like, Hey, are you all packed? And you're like, yeah, I'm all packed. They're probably going to ask you, did you pack? Toothbrush. Toothbrush. Toothpaste. Deodorant. So, so the toiletries. That's one category that parents, we are always harping. I'm always harping at my kids. Now, what my girls have learned to do is that if they go over to a friend's house that they've gone over to multiple times, they already have an overnight toothbrush and toothpaste that stays at that friend's house. If they know that throughout, why are you saying ooh? Like, you have a toothbrush that stays at your house that just sits there in the, in the toothbrush cup holder. When's the last time you cleaned the bottom of that cup? <laughs> Believe me, it has to be cleaned. If you didn't clean your cup in a long time, don't look in there. All right, so secondly, I heard it. I think it was somebody back here in this vicinity. Uh, uh, no, fudge stripe cookies, fudge stripe cookies, fudge stripe cookies. I heard it. I heard it again. Yeah, underwear. Woo! Underwear. <laughs> because what would happen if you got to the destination and you didn't have enough? I heard I heard that this I heard this at camp this year. I won't. I don't think it was anybody from our youth group. And I pray it wasn't. And I'm just going to pretend like if it was, I'm not going to say and try to bring it back to my memory. I'm pretty sure Thursday morning I heard somebody say at breakfast, I ran out of underwear. That's bad news. Like, that's like, third, like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm an overpacker. My family makes fun of me, but I sweat through everything, like going on the, the mission trip, summer camp, even going on vacation. Like, I, I sweat through everything. So I, I pack, even, even if I have access to a washer and dryer. And we did, even at Mission Tampa, we were, when we were staying at the BCM, we had access to a washer and dryer. I still overpacked, so I'm just an overpacker. I, don't want, I want to be prepared. You don't ever want to be in that situation. And actually, my wife and I found ourselves in that situation. We're celebrating our wedding anniversary earlier this year, and we got gifted an opportunity to go to Daytona Beach. Who loves the beach? Who loves the beach? Well, in Florida, it is the sunshine state, but it... Maybe sun shining, but the temperature always kind of fluctuate depending on the time of the year. Sometimes it's like hot and sweaty and sandy. And then other times at a beach like Daytona, it was super windy. So it was a lot colder. We were going to the beach. We were staying at like this resort place. We did not pack any long sleeve stuff because we're like, man, it's late April. It's going to be sunny. The temperature's... And we get there, and we found ourselves going to the stores on the strip right there on the mall or the, uh, uh, the A1A, whatever that Atlantic Highway is right there. And uh, we're looking, going to store to store to store to try to find long sleeve. Like, you don't think that. If you're packing for the beach, are you thinking about packing long sleeve stuff? No, you're not. And we found ourselves because... In those early morning walks that we would go to, who loves walking on the beach? Long walks on the beach. 
uh, walks on the beach are amazing, but not when the wind is like 20 miles per hour. <laughs> and, and it's like breezy and chilly, and my wife never got into the water of the ocean. Number one, how many of you know that the Atlantic Ocean is a lot cooler than the Gulf of Mexico? Come on. It's refreshing. It feels amazing. I loved it. Uh, my wife, she has one kidney. Pray for her. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she just uh, doesn't regulate body temperature the same anymore. So, uh, man, so we found ourselves. And that's what sometimes when we're, we're heading somewhere, we're packing, or when we're about ready to go into a battle, you want to make sure you have the right equipment, right? So as we dive in, we're going to uh, read. We're going to start in verse 1. We're going to go all the way down. Ephesians chapter 6. Go ahead. Open up your Bibles. Turn to, scroll over. I love to see some. We got some old school folks in the house tonight. I see some old school. Yeah. Paper Bibles. Love it. Paul writes, children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way that you treat them. Rather, bring them up with discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Verse 5, slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Try to please them. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you as slaves of Christ. Do the will of God with all your heart. Work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. Verse 9, masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Don't threaten them. Remember, you both have the same master in heaven. He has no favorites. Verse 10, a final word. Paul was writing. This is, the, this is the ending part of his letter to the church in Ephesus. And he says, a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. And then, after the battle, you'll be standing firm. Verse 14. So stand your ground putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. Verse 16, in addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And Paul concludes this section when he says, pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right word so that I may boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for both the Jews and the Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador so pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. The word of the Lord. If you grew up in more orthodox church, you would say, thanks be to God. <laughs> um, so as we dive in, we're going to go all the way back up to verse 1. Verse 1. And our subtitle that we're going to write down right now is, Obey Your Parents. Obey your parents. Yes, that's in the Bible. Actually, Paul writes it. He says, children, and this is actually for all of us. He says, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, 
and you will have a long life. So obey your parents. Honor your father and mother. What does that look like? If we truly believe God's word, we truly believe and we're, we're building this faith foundation for each and every one of us. And our faith is in Christ and it's real, it's solidified. We're living it out. Not perfectly, I'm not saying, but we're living it out. Our faith walk will prove true with the way that we handle our relationships and especially as we think about it as it starts at home for us. As it starts at home for us. By those who who know us best. And if we're probably honest right now, you can think back to those moments where you probably weren't as honoring in the way that you talked. I can still think back to those moments when I was your age that I was probably not as honoring to my mom and dad in those moments with the way that I was speaking. And even when, like this whole passage has even talked about us, talked to us tonight, that even when our parents aren't around, how honoring are you when they're not standing behind you or looking over you or making sure that you're doing the right and doing the right choices? See, children and parents have a responsibility to each other. It's a, it's a, it's a two-way street for us. And this passage of scripture unpacks that for us. But I want to speak to you like I would speak to my own children, is that you have a responsibility to honor your mom and dad. And I know right now, you're, you're already, you, if, if I could give you the microphone or give you an opportunity, you would stop me and say, hold up, Pastor Lance. What if my mom or dad are unreasonable? What if they're coming down? <laughs> what if they're coming? Your dad's right there, by the way. Just want to, I'm going to help you out. <laughs> what if? Yeah, we can get more reasonable. What if they're too demanding? What if, what, if, what if they're unfair? What if they're mean? I know this like makes it, this makes it, <laughs> this makes it look <laughs> even more creepier. Uh, but what? What am I supposed to do, Pastor Lance, if they're demanding and they're unfair? Honor them. The Bible didn't say only obey the nice parents. Maybe that's your mom or maybe that's your dad. I don't know. Who has the, 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 the pushover dad in their family? Who's the pushover? If you raise your hand right now. Who's the... Who, 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 whose mom is the softy? Like, like you're like you have mom like wrapped around your little pinky. Now, some of you who are raising your hand right now, you may be the youngest or an only child, and so I, I, I get that, I get that. But, but also moms and dads in the room, parents, adults, small group leaders, we also have a responsibility. Remember, I said it's both. The, the child and the parent has a responsibility here in this role and in this relationship, but we also should be gently connecting and gently caring for our children. Even if, so this is where, this is where parents get put on, on the hook, right? We're on the hook. Even when you're disobedient. Even when you're being disrespectful. We have to find a way to truth and love speak and love you in that moment. I've said this all the time. When we see children acting out, guess what you are? Children, right? Just like we've said this before, too. When, when an, uns, if an unsaved worldly person, and even if, that, if, that, if that's where you are right now, if you're not fully went all in with Jesus, there's going to be times where you pull and you act like the world. A worldly person or a sinner is going to act like a sinner. And even as us, we still have a pull, we still have a bend, and so we have to recognize that. Ideally, of course, Christian parents and Christian children will relate to each other with thoughtfulness and love. Thoughtfulness and love. Absolutely. When we talk about Honoring. 
But I do want to bring up real quick, one last touch on this, is that there is a difference between obeying and honoring. Obey means to do as one's told. Honor means to love and respect. Love and respect. You're not commanded, as children, you're not commanded to disobey God just to obey your parents. So there is a difference in that. And even as you grow up, when you become adult children, because you'll always be a child to your parents. You will always be your child's, your parents' child. But even as you become adult, you're not supposed to be submissive to a demeaning or abusive parent in that situation. But you should obey while under your parents' care and continue to honor your parents. One of the best ways, the way I can speak into your life right now is one of the most honoring ways that for your, that your parents could receive honor is if you live out your life to glorify God and what you do and what you say and who you're hanging out with. That's one incredible way. And I think it's important for us to take a look at that. As Paul is ending this letter to, to the Ephesians, it's, it's really important because he, he shifts. And really, it's not even a shift. He's talking about children obeying your parents, slaves honor your masters, because this world is a messed up world. This world is at war. It's time for war. And we pick up in chapter or in. In chapter 6, in verse 10, he says, when he says a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand against all the strategies of the devil. Not just some. Hey, I'm not giving you, this will protect you this way. No, this is all the strategies. And this is, I hope that you're aware of this. If God is giving you armor, that means that the devil is scheming to take you down. He has a battle plan. You better be ready. It's time for war. Because we're not battling against just flesh and blood enemies. Yes, there are bullies in this world. There are physical enemies. that There are thieves that want to come and take what's yours. And, and there are troops and people who are fighting back real, like, face-to-face -face evil. There's real evil in this world that is flesh and blood. But, but Paul is gearing us up and getting us ready to know that there are other dark powers at play here. In verse 13, he reiterates, he says, Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll be still be standing firm. In this Christian life, the battle is against rulers and authorities, the powerful evil forces, <laughs> and Satan is leading that. He's in charge of all of them. To withstand their attacks, we must depend on God's strength and in every piece of armor that he has given us. You can further look at that in, in Isaiah 11, verse 5, or Isaiah 49, 2, as he talks about and mentions the armor of God. But Paul gives us counsel not only to the church, not only to the entire body of believers, and that's why it's important. I'll never forget, it was, a, it was a base camp. Base camp is our men's Bible study that meets on the last Tuesday of the month. And Pastor Jason Meekham talked similarly about this, but he talked about the Spartans. How do you guys know about the Spartan army? Right? The Spartans are Greeks, but they are a complete separate section of Greeks that are the elite of the elite Spartans. I mean, from the time they're born, they're raised to be warriors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, but not just, they had this huge shield that covered the, them and half of the other man. Huge. They had a javelin that they carried in their hand that was great for thrusting and protecting, and then they also had a short sword. Um, but it's, it's, this, it's this battle, being ready. 
And that's why it's just the whole body of believers, but also for us as individuals. This isn't just for your neighbor to your right or your left. This is for you also. So we must help each other to stand our ground, to resist the enemy until the end of the battle. But we don't do this unarmed. And that's what we get into as he continues in verse 14. And this last sub heading that I want you to write down. So suit up, be prepared, and be confident. Suit up, be prepared, and be confident. I relate this, and actually, if some of you will remember, me and Christian Faust actually did a similar message in 2020 when we did it online and we, we aired this particular one, and I had Christian dress up in, in football pads. Because if I was going to put you into a football game, in an 11-on-11 football game, wouldn't you want to make sure that you had on the proper equipment if I was going to put you into that game? I mean, would you enter the football game if all the other 21 players on the field had pads and helmets? Would you go play like you are right now? <laughs> I, I have a couple of football players who, who may have played. Um, because I, I can remember back when I was in like third grade, my neighbor were playing like front yard football and my brother and I are, are, are crushing our neighbors. We were, we were big boys, right? And my neighbor, Jonathan, goes, hold up. He goes and puts his pads on. We still destroyed him. But he thought he thought he could he could add more. But if but if you were going to go into when all the other players, you would want to be prepared. You would want to be prepared. At least that's how I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> Ephesians 14. Paul reminds us to to stand our ground. In order to to stand our ground, we've got to get suited up. He says, "Put on the belt of truth. Put on the body armor of God's righteousness. Put on the shoes. And for shoes, you put on peace." That comes from the good news. This comes from the gospel that will be fully prepared. In addition, he says, pick up the shield of faith that's going to block every fiery arrow of the devil. He didn't, for a helmet, he says, put on salvation. Some of you are not ready. You got some of the pieces and, you, and you, you've picked and chosen like, oh, man, I, I, love, I, love, I love truth. Let me put on the belt of truth. Goes on my outfit today. Ooh, peace. Look at them pumps. Don't they look nice? Let me, let me get some Birkenstocks. I love that. Oh, ooh, man, the good news. That's good news. Ooh. Ooh, shield of faith? Yep, got it. You know, it's, it's really probably my parents' shield, but, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work it out. Ooh, salvation. Mmm. Not ready to go all in there. So some of your body is protected, but other areas are not. Salvation. Have you truly said yes to Jesus? Go all in. All in. And then, see, everything else is kind of protecting you. This last one. The sword of the Spirit. And what does is, what is Paul say the sword of the Spirit is? The word of God. See, some of you are, are just deflecting. Some of you are just defending yourself. But also, us as believers, we're suited up. <laughs> we're suited up. We're prepared. And now, when you pick up that sword, when you pick it up, I know I got an electronic one. <laughs> you have... You're not just going to defend yourself. You're going to attack. <laughs> also, I heard years ago, I want to encourage you in this, is that did you notice that all of this is like front-wearing armor? What does that mean? We're moving forward. We're charging ahead. This is not retreating armor. He doesn't say cover your backside. He didn't put anything on your buttocks. There's nothing really on your back because we're not retreating. We're charging forward into the fight. 
Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then, when you have all that, we're gathering together, he says, because we're going to pray in the Spirit at all times. And on every occasion, we're going to stay alert. We're going to be persistent in our prayers for every believer everywhere. I'm honored that on Friday nights, you can find me on a sideline. But before I get to that sideline, I get the honor to all the players are suited up. We're in there. The coach just gave the pregame speech. And then he says, all right, grab a brother because we pray. And it is in that moment. And there's not anything. I mean, yes, they're like I'm. It's, it's one last moment. It's an opportunity for me to speak into their lives, but it's also a prayer over them and for them in that moment because it's just like this, right? They're, they're, they're suited up, they're prepared, and now we want to be confident. And the confidence comes because if you knew, look to the person to the right or left of you right now. Would you be more confident if you knew that that person to the right or left of you that's sitting on your row right now, that if you knew that you were struggling, that they've been praying for you when you've been going through something hard? Because it doesn't matter how much armor you have on, how much protection, but if you're fearful, if you're cowardly, if you're shaking in your armor, right? Think back to the Israelites that are sitting on the hill. There's a giant who is defying the armies of the Lord. And David shows up and says, who is this Philistine? And they're like, he's a giant. (laughs) They're scared. They're like, hey, David, thanks for the cheese and bread, bro. (laughs) And they won't even go down to face him. They were scared in their armor. They weren't confident. And the confidence comes from that moment there. Verse 18, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Suit up. Be prepared. And be confident. The thing is, is that Paul closes out. And so I'm going to close my message tonight as we're going to get to a thought of the week as we close out this series. But Paul was undiscouraged and he was undefeated. Remember, we've been talking about this. I brought it up every time that I've spoken. Paul is writing this from where? He tells you in those last few verses. He's where? He's in prison. He's in prison. But not only does he say he's in prison, he's in what? Chains. He says, I am in chains. Yeah, quick back over to my Bible. Verse 20, I am in chains, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. Knowing That God has a purpose, God has a plan. So no matter where you find yourself, believe in that. Rest in that promise. Knowing God's eternal purpose for us will help us through these difficult times that we may face. And knowing that he's equipped you. You're not alone. You have brothers and sisters in Christ. You have a, a family, the body of believers. We are a body of believers. So if you feel like you're going through something alone, Stop there. That's that's why we're going to go to small group in a little bit. Because we need to be able to lean on each other. And that's the thought for this week. Every day, we need to be on guard and be confident in the Lord. Every day, we need to be on guard and be confident in the Lord. If you knew you were heading into a certain area of a neighborhood or, and actually I'm very vigilant. I I, I don't know if you guys know this about me. If you see my social media sometimes, but I I like to fish. 
And there's something about fishing in Florida that you need to be aware of. Snakes and alligators. Snake. And I'm not a jump scare person. My kids can tell you this. I've, I've been to Hollow Scream. They try to, they, try to, they try to jump out and scare me all the time. I'm like an internal person. And by the way, if you ever really think that you get to me and scare me, watch out because I'm a punch person. <laughs> but I internalize it. But I will jump scare very, very quickly if I'm standing right next to the edge of that water and I'm fishing and I'm distracted and, and all of a sudden something jumps to the right or to the left of me. And I'm like, always keep your head on a swivel. That's the way it is in life. We know that there are things that are evil in this world. Every day, be on guard and be confident. Be on guard and be confident. That's my hope for you guys. Uh, There are some action steps that we want to be able to take. So think about ways that, as we talked about earlier, right, obey your parents. What are some ways that you can honor them this week and the next week or so? How can you honor them? And then finally, think about the physical armor. I know you don't Walk around your house. I don't know, maybe some of you, the way that I saw some of you join me on the Wacky Wednesday, maybe some of you are walking around in armor <laughs> in your house. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's in the dungeon and, you know, it's uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, week at your parents' basement. I don't know. LARPing, it's a real thing. Um, but just think about the, from the spiritual aspect, how could you physically, if you walked yourself through that, maybe read Ephesians 6 this week and read 14 through 20. Maybe, need to, maybe that needs to be starting out for you and put yourselves that way. You're on guard and you're confident. Let me pray for you. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for uh, this evening. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit being here and, and challenging us through your word. Um, Lord, uh, I truly believe that, Lord, Every single student needed to be reminded of this tonight. That we are, we are facing some, some weird times. Lord, whether in our community, in our schools, or even just overall in our country today, Lord, we need to be prepared. We need to suit up. We need to be confident. And so, Lord, I thank you for your promise. And, Lord, I I pray that even now, Lord, each person would realize, Lord, that they have someone that they can reach out to, Lord, within their small group, their small group leaders, that they're not in this alone, that we are all in this together. Every believer, everywhere. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen.